Hi guys, I'm Grace, reporting for On The Map, Off The Radar, and this week we're going to be talking about TTIP, the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership. Um, and this is a free trade agreement aimed at harmonising legislation between the US and the EU. Um, and it's been called a corporate coup d'etat and a full frontal assault on democracy. So what's going on here? I mean, I, probably most of you think that free trade is a good thing. And it really depends on who it's good for. It's very good for corporations, for um, you know banks, for the global elite more generally, because it allows them to move their capital around freely. Um, it allows them to scurry money away in you know offshore um, secrecy jurisdictions, as I talked about last week. It also vast. It opens up new markets for labour and vastly reduces the power of labour relative to capital and depresses wages. So yes, for some people, free trade is a good thing. Um, for others, it hasn't been. All you have to do is look at the experience of African countries who went through structural adjustment in the 1980s and the horrible consequences it had for their economies, society and development more broadly to see that actually free trade benefits some people over others. Now, this is a more broad argument that I'll hope to go into later, but I'm going to talk today about one instance where um, this free trade agreement is really going to be very harmful for you, society and um, the economy in the in Britain and the EU more broadly. Um, so there are a couple of things that TTIP is going to be really bad for. Firstly, the NHS. TTIP includes clauses which mean that um, governments who sign up to it have to commit to privatisation. Um, privatisation of public services, of um, various nationalised industries, um, so that US companies can come in and get involved in the provision of these services. This threatens the NHS and this has been a real uh, cornerstone of um, the backlash against TTIP in the UK. Secondly, banking regulation. I don't know if any of you know about this, but after the financial crisis, the US government introduced Dodd-Frank, which um, introduced a number of provisions about you know, early warnings um, in the financial system, kind of harmonization, um, sorry, streamlining of regulation, and um, you know, provisions on executive pay and all these sorts of things, uh, which were aimed at preventing a repeat of 2007. This is a real annoyance to the city, which ever since the expansion of the euro dollar market has been heavily integrated with Wall Street. And so this is something that's actually going to really be, um, you know, a bad thing for the society in the US. Um, so this harmonization of banking legislation essentially means getting rid of as much banking legislation as it's possible. And we all know how that turned out with Glass-Steagall before the financial crisis. Um, right, and then there's food and environment legislation. The US is notoriously lax on these fronts and where the um, EU has really pushed for a lot of environmental legislation, legislation around, um, you know, uh, food and safety and these sorts of things. And that's going to be completely eviscerated by the TTIP. Um, then there's privacy. I don't know if you, you guys remember, but a couple of years ago, um, the EU was voting on ACTA, which was um, a, a, about copyright infringement and about counterfeit goods. So this is like generic drugs produced by very poor countries to try and treat their populations of things like AIDS because they can't afford the drugs that are sold to them by Big Pharma in the US. So it was aimed at you know getting rid of that and also aimed at um, internet piracy, which, okay, fair enough, but that would mean that governments would be allowed to constantly monitor your internet activity 24-7. And that's why, because of um, pressure from civil society, this got rejected from the EU. Then there's jobs. The US already has experience of this with NAFTA. You know, big corporations told the US society and the US mainstream media that NAFTA was going to be great, introduced jobs, you know, great for everyone, great for society, great for equality, whereas of course that didn't happen. It vastly increased inequality, depressed wages, and lost a, a million net jobs in the US. Um, so this is another example of corporate power co-opting the mainstream media and getting their regulation in through the back door. Um, and finally, the most important thing, corporate power. 93% of those involved in the negotiation of TTIP have been corporate lobbyists. That's an insane amount. This is, you know, this really is a corporate coup d'etat. Another thing which is really important I want to talk to you about is um, Chevron in Ecuador. Chevron um, dumped a ton of toxic waste in the Ecuadorian rainforest a couple of years ago. And this caused loads of problems, cancer, birth deformities, all these different things. And the Ecuadorian government subsequently tried to sue Chevron to get them to clean up after themselves. Chevron resolutely refused and actually sued Ecuador for trying to sue them based on this regulation that is going to be introduced in TTIP that allows corporations to sue governments if they feel like they're harming their profits. This is 
an unbelievable breach of any sort of accountability between citizens and government and it's just corporations trying to get their agenda in through the back door. I'm going to put some links in, in the description in the bottom so that you can go and read more about this um, and so you can sign the petition to make sure that TTIP doesn't get passed. Thanks very much, this has been On The Map of the Radar.